Trying to get this link there. There, I think you, yeah, that seems not bad. Um, you can't see the food, but I don't think there's any help for that. It'd be great if you oh, could see no, the food. I have to see the food. Yeah, I'll have to hold it so we can see the food. It's going to be very difficult. No. Uh, have water for the recipe, though. Right? And that's raw chicken. I don't think we want to touch that one. This almost works. It's going to have to work. It's not going to work. Just hold it. That's going to be really difficult. But it uh, won't be difficult. All right. Now you're going to be able to get around to like see this. I think you're going to need to move that whole setup. I think you're going to need to be getting back there. What do you need to get back there for? You need to put it on the, on the stove top. I'll move it around like a camera man. Okay. Just move through my auto move back to the table. I think you can start. Okay. Hi everybody. I'm Louisa. Hope you're doing great. Um, I am here to make a super simple Persian recipe with you. Um, turmeric chicken with sumac and lime. Here's a picture of it. Finished. Um, it's from my cookbook, The New Persian Kitchen, and I love showing people this recipe because it's a really simple way to get the full spectrum of Persian flavors, but with a really, really simple recipe that only involves a few seasonings. Um, so here we go. So um, let's see, I have a pan that's heating up here on the stove top. And I'm gonna set it to medium. And I have some chicken thighs here that uh, are bone in, skin on, which is really my, my favorite um, <laughs> way to have chicken thighs. And, and here's Dante, and he's attending, he's my sous chef, right? Um, so I've got my thighs, they have skin on, bone in. I've just kind of trimmed any extra fat that's on them, but they're they're all ready to cook. And the first uh, seasonings that I'm going to put on there are um, just a really simple combination of turmeric, pepper, and salt. So that's it. You need three things a teaspoon of turmeric, a tablespoon of salt, which sounds like a lot, but it's not, and um, two teaspoons of black pepper. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix those up. Yeah, I'm mixing. Dante, do you want to help stir? Do you want to stir? You've gotten so good at stirring. Thank you, baby. That's right, round and round, round and round, okay. And then you take this beautiful spice combination and you just coat your chicken thighs with it. Yeah. All right, so they have this really gorgeous orange and black thing going on. And if you've ever cooked with turmeric, it's a really interesting spice. It is in virtually Every Persian recipe that involves um, meat, you know, or poultry, or, or you know, lamb or, or beef. And it takes a little getting used to. It's very kind of earthy. Um, but it really, it adds a depth of flavor and sort of a base note and, and a richness that really becomes addictive. I now, these days, if I make chicken, I pretty much have to put turmeric on it. If I make um, 
oh, a pot of lentils. I just, I have to add some turmeric or it just doesn't feel, it just doesn't taste well-rounded. Okay, so I have these chicken thighs, thighs. They're, they're beautifully coated with my spice mixture. And so now I have my, my large pan up here that's on medium, medium high. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do to start the cooking is add two tablespoons of cooking oil. Um, you can do grapeseed oil. Today I happen to have olive oil. Uh, olive oil works just fine. So my pan was already hot, so my oil's looking nice and hot. I can see it shimmering, so I know it's, I'm ready to um, throw in the thighs. I'm gonna throw them in skin side down so that gets a really nice little sear, okay? So there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna reach over. Can you pass my phone, please? <laughs> And I'm gonna set a timer for seven minutes. Thank you. So seven minutes might sound like a lot, but it's really not. What you want, I'm pressing start. What you want on here is a really dark sear. And what that sear does is it locks in the juiciness of the chicken so there's just no way to overcook this chicken. And um, when you try this recipe, you'll see it, it's a really effective method. You're almost taking it to a color that's beyond what you would think is right. It should almost look like it's going to the dark side, like burnt, but it's not burnt. It's giving you this caramelization that's gonna bring out the flavor and really lock in the juiciness. That's one of the great things about this recipe. Uh, so I wanted to dive right in and get the cooking going because this is going to take seven minutes per side. So I figure while that's searing, I will tell you a little bit more about the spices. Um, so turmeric, probably a lot of people are familiar with this one. It's got a, a really bitter smell. And, um, oh gosh, I don't know. I'll just, just dump some out right here so you can see. Look at this gorgeous color. See that? Um, so it gives just like a golden hue to whatever you cook with it. Um, you also have to be careful. It will stain anything. Uh, it will stain clothes. It will stain um, linoleum. It will, it will stain, you know, your kitchen surfaces. So you have to be careful. Um, but you can put this in marinades. You can, you know, put it in ahead of time or you can just add it as you cook. Um, so, so I'll just make a little comment. This is not my home kitchen. I'm in an Airbnb, not because of the pandemic, because, but because of the tornado, which hit our house in Nashville just before we all were told to uh, do social distancing for the coronavirus. So I happen to be in an Airbnb uh, that has like a pretty rustic setup. It's just the electric stove top. Um, but it's, it's actually been great. So um, my child, Dante, is home from school, as are pretty much virtually all children right now. <laughs> and he's hanging out on the porch, and he's not exactly sure what the heck is going on. It's okay, Dante. You can come back in if you want to. Um, anyway, if you have some wine, this is a great time to crack some open while you're watching this. I'm enjoying a little bit while I'm cooking this. I think we all have a new kind of appreciation for wine during the pandemic, so feel free to enjoy some while you watch this recipe. Um, so while my chicken is doing this beautiful searing, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about another spice that is part of this recipe. This is just gonna go on as a finisher. This is sumac. So it's really, again, another really beautiful color. It's a deep reddish brown. Um, this sumac that I have here is, it's kind of moist and, and almost sticky. I think it's pretty fresh. Um, sumac is made from little tart berries, sumac berries that grow wild around different parts of the U.S. They, they're also in the Middle East. Um, if you're familiar with za'atar seasoning, which I'm sure a lot of you are, 
that you've already tasted sumac in Zakhar seasoning. Um, but in Iran, it's, it's always on the table. It is part of every kitchen pantry. It's, it's kind of around like, like salt and pepper. And what it does is it gives meats or fish or chicken or really anything, but especially meats, um, a little citrus lemon flavor, but you don't need to actually have the citrus. You just sprinkle on a little bit of this. And it's delicious, and it's also just a gorgeous garnish to have around. Um, you know, if, if you don't happen to have fresh herbs or edible flowers or something and you want to make a dish look gorgeous, you just sprinkle on a little bit of sumac, and it, it adds a really beautiful, subtle lemon flavor. Um, so we can take a look over here at how these chicken thighs are looking. Um, so when you have uh, chicken thighs with the skin on, you have a lot of extra fat. So it looks like there's a lot of fat in this pan. So I only had two tablespoons of olive oil in there. So some of that is the fat just kind of melting off of the chicken thighs and getting in there. And it's going to give it a really rich, um, full flavor. Because that's one, probably my, my very favorite saying in the kitchen is fat carries flavor. So we want a lot of fat. That's a lot of why these... Um, Skin on chicken thighs taste so good. Um, anyway, I hope everybody is doing really well. We have about, oh, just a minute until I turn these over. But I hope everyone is faring well during this crazy pandemic. And if you're in Nashville, like a lot of us are, like the, the Jewish Federation and the Jewish Foundation here in Nashville, um, I hope people are not suffering the, the double whammy of the tornado and, and the pandemic like we are. Although we were lucky, our, our house, I should say, is happily being repaired as we speak. We got a new roof and new windows put on our house yesterday. We had 11 broken windows. Um, so we'll soon be back in our house. But uh, wherever you are, I, I hope that this time is being good, good to you and is maybe giving you some new insights into what life could really be like. Uh, I know it has given me a lot of insights. We, we are staying out in the country in Franklin, outside of our Nashville city home, and it's been quite nice to breathe some fresh air. Um, okay, so these are almost ready to flip. Um, another, I'll tell you about another ingredient that's going in here, and that is garlic. There are four cloves of garlic in this recipe, so I already have them um, all minced and ready to throw in. Persian cuisine is actually very, very garlicky. Uh, we love our garlic, our onions, all of the, the spectrum of alliums, whether it's yellow onions, scallions, garlic, um, shallots, all of it. We love it. Um, it's, it's one of the real trademarks of Persian cooking. And um, so this dish has a lot of garlic in it, but it's very subtle because it's going to cook in the cooking liquid. Oh, that's my timer. Okay, so you're going to get to see the, the degree of searing on this chicken. So I'm going to flip it over. See that nice golden color on there? I'm flipping it. So this really looks gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to set it for another seven minutes. and let this happen on the other side. But this is exactly what you want, this beautiful, deep, golden color. Um, until it gets there, you're, you're not really done. So, you know, set your timer, walk away, have a glass of wine or whatever. You're not burning the chicken. It, it's gonna be better this way. Um, so that's doing its thing. Um, one other thing that's gonna go in this dish is lawn juice. This is going to be a garnish. I like to serve this dish with um, two full limes cut in half. So everyone gets, each person, each serving gets a half of a, an entire lime. Um, in Persian cuisine, we really love acid. We, we have all kinds of acidic, citrusy ingredients. So I've already talked about the sumac. 
Um, we have limes, which are a, an essential part of the cuisine. We also use lemons, we use oranges, we use sour oranges. Um, there's also something called barberry that we use. That's another really tart, small berry. Um, we use tamarind. I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but acid is really one of the things that, that sets off this cuisine. Oh, pomegranates, pomegranate molasses, um, all different kinds of kind of sourish fruits, sour cherries we also have in Iran, just like we have here. They also have a really short season. Um, but those those really tart, fruity flavors really set off meat. And it's such a curious thing to think of meat and fruit together, but it, this is one of the essential components of, of Iranian cooking. And um, as I sit here sipping my glass of wine, I should also mention that in the ancient world, Iran was actually known for its wonderful wines. Um, they made date wines and grape wines. And that was part of the cuisine as well, that, that sourness, that acid that you get from wine. And um, it just kind of continues right into the food. There's, there's a continuum with the vinegar, the citrus, the sour berries. Um, okay, so we're almost here with our second side of these thighs. They're coming along. And they have this beautiful golden color that's really enhanced by the turmeric. And so the next thing I'm going to do is when we hit the seven minute mark, I'm going to pour in some water that I already measured out, three fourths cup of water. And I'm going to, I'm going to go from searing the chicken to braising it to let the cooking continue and, and finish cooking through the chicken. Because this searing, it only cooks the outside of the chicken. It doesn't actually cook it through. The, the cooking through is going to take part in the next phase, which is braising. So I'm going to pour in my water. And I'm going to add my garlic. And that's going to be another essential seasoning that really flavors these, these chicken thighs. And then I'm just going to let it cook for a while. Um, so you'll see how that happens. And, and by the way, if anyone has... Any questions, you are welcome to uh, put in any questions and they will come over to me magically via text. Let me see if I have any questions so far. No. What? On the screen. Yeah. Um, so, so these are cooking away. I've got my limes, my sumac, and my garlic. Um, there's also quite a bit of black pepper in here, and I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper to finish the dish. And um, that's pretty much it. So I have a few minutes to talk about spices. I will tell you that I have um, recently put together a Persian spice cooking set that's kind of, oh, wait, I think I actually have some questions. Can you read those to me? Okay. I see in your book that you recommend portobello's or, or tofu for a vegetarian dish. You have a preference. Oh, thank you for that question. Um, I kind of, Sarah, thank you. I really love both. Um, tofu is, gosh, it's such a great texture and it's super, it can be super full flavored and, and so close to a meat texture. Um, but same with portobello's. I mean, if you want to start with something that's just a little bit more of a blank slate, it's always going to be tofu because mushrooms have their own um, kind of personality to start with. But honestly, either one is really delicious. Okay, I just got another text on my phone, which is a great question, which is what do you serve this chicken with? And typically you would serve it with... Um, a fluffy basmati rice, or really any kind of a fluffy grain. You could do quinoa, you could do millet, um, you could do brown rice, you know, if you wanted, you could do couscous. Um, but you want, at the end, it's gonna have a really rich, flavorful sauce. It's got a lot of citrus 
and a lot of um, you know juicy fat in it. And it's it's really nice if you have something fluffy to soak up that incredible sauce. So so that's pretty much what um, what I would recommend. Um, oh gosh, someone wrote Persian food is the best food in the world. Yeah, <laughs> I I totally agree. Um, it's really wonderful. And I'm I'm so happy to have the opportunity to kind of explain a little bit about herbs and food to you. The the big use of garlic and alliums, the, the use of citrus and sour flavors and the pairing of fruit with meat, which is so curious. Um, but they're they're all really hallmarks of of Persian cooking. And um, I know we actually have in Nashville a lot of Iranian Jews. And oh, that's our timer. And I'm going to continue with that thought. So right now, I'll let you see up close what this this chicken is looking like. So the the second side again has this beautiful golden sear. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and pour in my water, which is really my cooking liquid. Okay, so this is going to puff up with some steam. Attention, cameraman! It's going to puff up. Okay, here we go. Woo! Okay. Um, and then I'm going to take my garlic that I have minced, my four cloves of garlic, and I'm going to put them in the pan, and I'm going to kind of carefully spoon them right into the cooking liquid, so it's just sort of going between the pieces of chicken, not on top of them, because if it goes on top of the chicken, it's not really going to cook. I'm just going to put it right there in that braising liquid, right in there. And oh my gosh, already that smells amazing. So I'm gonna shake the pan a tiny bit. Um, I'm gonna watch until this water returns to a boil so I know it's fully cooking. Then I'm gonna turn it down to low and put a lid on it and set a timer for 25 minutes. Now. Uh, through the magic of home YouTube live cooking during the pandemic. Um, I'm going to show you what that sauce looks like after it has been cooking for all that time. It looks like this. It's a beautiful, thick, rich cooking liquid. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to turn up the heat until it comes back to a boil. So this is, you know, this is chicken fat, it's it's water, it's the spices, and it, it's been cooking around these um, chicken thighs for, you know, almost a half an hour. So it's still a little bit thin to call it a sauce, but I, I want to put it over the chicken thighs when I serve them, so I'm basically just going to heat it up, let it come to a boil, and let it thicken a little bit. Um, and I'm going to show you what the chicken thighs look like. So these are the chicken thighs that I cooked off a little bit earlier. So this is what they look like, finished. And of course you want to, once your chicken thighs are done cooking, you wanna just cut into them and make sure that the inside is cooked through before you take them out of the cooking liquid. And so all you need to do really is just turn one of them over, um, go in there with a fork, just cut in a little bit. So let's let's take a look. I turned this one over. I don't want to cut into the skin because that's the side I'm going to serve it on. So this is the underside. So um, you can see it's it's beautifully it's beautifully cooked through. Um, the meat should be you know, white, or if it's dark meat like this, you know, it should be dark, but no pink. So fully cooked through. Okay, so now I have my, um, my cooking liquid is thickening. It's, I've got it out of boil, so I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. I'm just really letting it reduce, and so I can use that as a beautiful sauce at the end. Um, okay, and then I had a theme that I said I was gonna come back to that I was talking about, and I completely forget what I was saying. Um, well, one thing I was going to say was I do have a new Persian cooking spice kit um, that I have started selling on my website, and it's 
all the spices that you need to make all of the recipes in the in my cookbook, the New Persian Kitchen. And um, I was really excited to find a local Nashville woman, a uh, woman-owned spice shop. It's called Suraj, S-U-R-A-J. And uh, the woman who started it, she, she just started the spice store, I want to say, in um, 2019. And she's fantastic to work with, and she has um, wonderful sources for all of her spices. And she herself is Indian American. And uh, if you've had Persian cuisine and Indian cuisine, you might know that the two are really, really similar. We share a lot of spices in common. So um, she carries all of the spices that I need. So it's been really nice to find her and get all these beautiful, freshly ground spices for, for my spice kit. I know what I was saying before. I was saying that there are a lot of Iranian Jews in Nashville. And if, if any native natives to Nashville, Iranian Jews are watching this, please invite me to your home so I can see your recipes that you make and see what you eat for your Shabbat dinners. Um, I, I'm always curious about what Iranian Jews from different parts of Iran um, like to make. You know, I, I really only know a few of the dishes, Gandhi, which is kind of a Persian matzo ball, and um, the Persian version of haroset, which involves dates and bananas and pomegranate syrup. But um, I love I love seeing what other Iranian Jews like to cook. Um, okay, so this sauce is getting nice and thick. If you can, well, let's see if you, I can show you this without spilling it on the screen. Um, maybe my my camera person here can show this sauce. So it's bubbling away. It's, it's been about um, four minutes. So I'm going to say that's pretty much thick enough to to pour over my my chicken thighs. Let's see. This is looking really nice. Okay, so I have this beautiful golden sauce. I'm gonna pour it right over the thighs. You don't have to use all of it if you don't want to. You can really save this sauce and, and use it for, um, you know, garnishing another dish or you can use it, it right in the grains that you're cooking. If you want to cook, pour some of this into rice or quinoa that you're cooking, it would give it oh, so much flavor. Okay, so now each of these chicken thighs has plenty of that garlic, that garlicky sauce on it. Okay, and I'm going to finish by uh, doing a little bit more black pepper. Got a nice little bite of pepper on here. Okay, and then I've got my gorgeous sumac that I'm gonna put on. So that's sort of an extra layer of citrus and fruitiness and tartness. So think kind of dried lemon peel almost with just a slightly different shade of flavor. And then because we Iranians can never get too much sour flavor, I'm gonna serve this up with limes and so, you know, when each person gets their serving, they just put the juice of a lime over their, over their chicken thigh. And you can see that fattiness and that citrus together is just a, such an unbeatable combination. Um, so that's it. Turmeric, turmeric chicken thighs with sumac and lime. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out with me. I hope this gives a little levity to your uh, to your social distancing and gives you one more um, fun recipe to add to your repertoire. Oh, we have a new question. Do you know if Siraj is selling anywhere for pickup right now? Um, that's a really great question. I think you should go to their website. If you just Google Siraj, S-U-R-A-J Spices in Nashville, I'm sure they have the whole breakdown of what they're doing on their website. And I will be doing another cooking video a week from today, and I will get the intel on how Siraj is selling their spices for next week. Um, so that's it. Um, salute, everyone. Cheers. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you next week. And I do hope you will try making the Turmeric chicken thighs.
Thanks. Oops. <laughs>